Hello, welcome to Anatomy with Babish. Today we're going to go over blood typing. I'm just joking, please don't sue me. But um, all right, no, uh, welcome to um, well, Mr. Anatomy with Mr. M or Mr. Mullally. Uh, it's been a while since I've recorded a video for YouTube or done a demonstration, but I wanted to do just a really quick rundown on how to do blood typing. Um, as you can see, I've got these supplies laid out here, and I'm going to kind of walk you through step by step as to how to do it. Um, but first, just a brief explanation. Remember, it's important um, that we get blood types correct when we are going to be uh, administering blood transfusions to um, make sure we increase people's blood volumes that return them back to normal blood pressure um, because if someone does receive the incorrect blood type antibodies in that person's circulatory system will immediately react to those um, to those foreign uh, red blood cells and cause a transfusion reaction. And let's review the lingo just a little bit here um, about this as well. Remember what we're doing is we are testing to see which antigens are on the outer surface of a person's red blood cells. Remember an antigen is a unique surface marker to a cell that has the potential to stimulate an immune response, especially if it is a foreign antigen, um, meaning that's something the immune system has never seen before or encountered. All right, and then we are using antibodies to try to tag these um, to tag these antigens on these red blood cells uh, to see if they are present or not. And I'll talk about that more in a moment. But just a few things that should be necessary for something like this. Um, I usually like to put a piece of paper towel underneath this uh, this basin here because it just helps uh, see better. Plus, it's honestly helping with the video as well. But a few other things you should have handy before you do this is a. First and foremost, always exercise universal precautions and have um, gloves, especially when you're doing this on other people. We don't want, because you know we're talking about poking fingers, getting blood out. If people have transmissible diseases, we do not want those to be moving around. All right, um, this rate, you well, we can't see it, but this is a handy dandy sharps container to dispose of the lancet that I will use to get the blood out of myself with. However, prior to using the lancet, you should always use an alcohol pad to clean the, the finger off. Um, then obviously I'm you know, going to poke myself, so I'm going to bleed a little bit, so a band-aid is going to be important. Um, here, what we have are antibodies that I'm going to use to, um, that are meant to tag the specific antigens to see if they are present or not on the uh, erythrocytes. So usually when you see these antibodies in serum uh, that are uh, blue in color, that, that, that's usually universally, uh, or those are un usually universally A antibodies. In yellow, um, these would be B antibodies. And then uh, the clear colored one here, these would be antibodies for the D antigen or the RH factor. Okay, um, so just to, just to review again for a moment, these antibodies are meant to tag specific antigens. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'll show you this up close. If you look closely at this tray here, you'll see there are three basins in here. And then you'll see there's an A, a B, and an RH, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna poke my index finger. Now, I'm usually what I tell people to do for this lab is um, to use their non-dominant hand for this. So I'm right-handed, I'm gonna use my left index finger. Um, so what, what you'll do is you'll poke your finger, put a drop of blood in each one. Now you wanna make sure you get a sufficient amount of blood in each tray, but you don't need to hemorrhage into them either, okay? I'll, I'll show you what a sufficient amount will look like. Because uh, there has to be enough blood for the antibodies to interact with. Now. What you're going to be looking for, again, a little more lingo here, you're going to be looking for what's called agglutination, okay? Agglutination is when specific antibodies bind to multiple antigens on multiple cells at a time, causing them to clump together, okay? So if, um, so basically, if these antibodies tag these antigens on my erythrocytes, you're going to see agglutination or clumping going on in there. If there are no antigens uh, on my erythrocytes that these antibodies can match to, then it will just simply look like I mixed two liquids together, okay? So just for example, this is the A antigen. So I'm gonna put a drop of blood in each one of these. Obviously, I'm gonna mix the A antibodies with the drop of blood where it says A. I'm gonna put a drop of blood in B. I'm gonna mix it where it says B. And then same thing with the D or the RH here as well, okay? Now let's say, hypothetically speaking, um, I had the B antigen on my erythrocytes. 
Um, if these B antibodies were to mix with that drop of blood, these have an antigen that they can target, that they can bind to, and the red blood cells are going to clump immediately. They're going to agglutinate. And that will show that I have the B antigen. So these antibodies are meant to target these specific antigens, the A, the B, and the D antigens, or what we also call the Rh factor. Okay. Um, I hope that was clear enough and that makes sense. Now let's kind of uh, let's run through the demo and then we'll discuss the results and uh, go from there. So, and again, just even though I'm working on myself and using my own blood, um, I just want to promote universal precautions. So let's just uh, I'm just going to glove up my right hand here because it'd be kind of stupid if I uh, poke myself through the glove, uh, my left wearing a glove. So first, let's uh, open up the alcohol swab. And then again, I'm going to use my left index finger, so I'm just going to just, that's about all we need. Now, obviously, just let that, it, it'll be quick, but just let it air dry. Do not blow on your finger to try to dry it, because that will defeat the whole purpose of trying to disinfect your skin in this area, because you'll blow bacteria on it. So just give it a moment, let it air dry. Okay. And then what I usually advise my students to do as well before they're actually going to use the lancet to poke someone's finger um, is I usually advise that you milk blood to the tip of your finger because you see how my fingertip is turning uh, red right there. So I'm pushing blood up into the tip of my finger. That way uh, it, I'll guarantee that I'll get an adequate amount of blood into each of these basins. And like I said, you, you want a good size drop in there, but like I said, you don't necessarily need to hemorrhage out in the things. All right, and, and obviously people bleed differently. There's many variables that can go into that. Okay, so the finger is dry now. Most lancets nowadays are a lot more advanced than when I was a student and doing this stuff. I literally just got a piece of metal with a sharp tip on, and you had to just stab yourself. Okay, now we got these fancy spring-loaded ones. So basically, what you want to do is um, remove the cap. Now these spring-loaded ones are one use only. Okay. Um, so make sure that when you use these that you're prepared to use them. So as you can see where the hole is, that's the business end of the lancet. So obviously be careful with that. Um, don't use it unless you're obviously ready. Um, there is a obviously a needle in there that is spring loaded. Um, so again, I'm going to remilk. And make sure when you poke a finger, you do it at an angle to where the person can easily get the drops of blood out. Okay, you don't want to do it like right in the middle or on a side where it's going to be hard. Make sure you do it because I'm going to do it right about here. All right, I'll try to get up close so you can see that. All right, so then you see how my fingertip is nice and red, and let's give a poke. Ah I'm just joking. All right, okay, so now you can see the blood is coming out. Okay, one drop, two drop, three drops, okay. All right, so now we've got that. And it should be obvious as to why we have a Band-Aid handy. Oops. Get that on real quick. Okay, I did a terrible job of that, but okay, so if you look closely at this, I mean, that is definitely an adequate amount of blood within each uh, basin here. So again, you can see there's the A, there's the B, and there's RH. That, like I said, is, is definitely enough blood for that. Um, you could even work with a little less. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put antibodies in each of these individually. So obviously where it's A, you're going to put a few drops of A antibodies in there. That should suffice. And let's, uh, let's mix it up. So then, so basically, and you can see how these stir sticks are color coded. So basically, I'm gonna mix that up. Okay, and then we're just gonna let that sit for a moment. Actually, now that I'm no longer um, self harming myself, I'm gonna put the other glove on again, just because I want to you know, always make sure universal precautions are getting ingrained in your folks' brains. Um, okay, so then next gonna mix the B antibodies okay now you can see that I'm using uh, separate stir sticks for each base and while I'm doing this I'm gonna ask you why why not just use one stir stick and just mix all three together Well, you don't want to cross-contaminate because these antibodies are meant for specific antigens. So if I, so uh, I'll explain that more in a moment when we look at the results. 
Now, from my experience in years of doing this, the RH factor is usually a little stubborn and takes a little longer. I don't know if it's just simply because of the, the, the clear coloring or what, but you usually want to be a little patient with this and give it a little bit of time to check and watch for agglutination. Okay, and you really want to get in there and just make sure you mix, make sure you're not splashing too much while doing that. And obviously, um, you know, wearing goggles wouldn't hurt doing this either, especially if, again, you're doing this around patients or people that have communicable diseases through a fluid transfer. But again, we need three separate stir sticks for these because we want to make sure that, um, that there's no cross-contamination of antibodies here. So let's, I'm going to lift this up and we're going to look at the results. And you see how fast this is already, uh, how, how fast this is. Okay, so if we look at A, See all that speckling going on there? That's agglutination. So those antibodies, so so those antibodies are binding to the A antigen, causing all those red blood cells to clump, 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 clump. You know, agglutinate, agglutinate. Okay. Um, and then notice when you look at B, you don't notice how A and B look noticeably, discernibly different from one another. So look, with B, it just looks like two liquids are mixed together. And then with the RH factor, if you look. Sorry, I'm trying to get this as clear as I can to focus. You can see that there is agglutination in the RH factor as well. It's just probably a little more difficult because this is a clear and, and I mean, this is a nice dot camera, but, you know, but uh, I'm borrowing this from a friend, so it's my first time using this as well. Okay, so we have agglutination with uh, A. We have no agglutination with B. And then we have agglutination with the RH factor. I want you to tell me... Well, granted, that'd be weird if you told me, but um, but I want you to just take a moment to think. What is my blood type? What is my blood type? Take a moment to think My blood type is A positive. Okay. So let's talk about that. So there was agglutination. So because there was agglutination in this basin with A, that means that my erythrocytes had an A antigen for those antibodies to bind to. So that shows that the A antigen is present in my erythrocytes. And then if you look at where it says B, where it just looks like there's two liquids mixed together, these B antibodies had nothing to interact with or bind to um, because I do not have a B antigen in my erythrocytes. Therefore, um, therefore there's um, nothing happening. And then now you can really see the agglutination, the RH factor. Uh, hopefully you can see that better, but um, there we go. So you can see the agglutination. Um, I have D and B antigens on my red blood cells. Therefore, um, the D antibodies have an antigen to bind to, again, causing agglutination. So because the A antigen is there, I am A. There is no B, so that's not a non-factor. And because the RH factor is present, that, that will yield a positive blood type, okay? If there was no agglutination in the RH factor, then that would be a negative blood type, okay? So, um, so my blood type is A positive. I guess that explains why. Uh, I wish my grades matched my blood type throughout my life. But, um, but now let's just talk a little bit. Uh, now here's what I want. Something I want you to think about as well. So, knowing that my blood type is A positive. For starters, how many possibilities are there? If I were to receive a transfusion, if I were in a situation where I was losing blood rapidly, first off, I want you to think: How many possible blood types could I receive? Think just for a moment about that. How many different blood types could I receive if I were to need a transfusion? And the correct answer would be four. I can get four different blood types. Okay. Now let's explore the possibilities of that. Well, I mean, when push comes to shove, the obvious one should always be what you are. So I can get A positive blood. Okay. Well, I can also get A negative blood because, again, my immune system recognizes the A antigen as being original to myself. And there's nothing to worry about here because there's no RH factor. Okay. Now, there's two other possibilities as well that I could receive. I could receive O positive because 
O, I always tell my students to think of O as like zero. There's zero A or B antigens. Um, and then because my immune system has seen the RH factor before, it, has, it, it recognizes it as unique as, as being for me as a self antigen, so it won't react to it, or meaning the antibodies in my blood. Um, and then I could obviously get O negative, which is what we classify as the universal donor, because there are literally no antigens for the for antibodies of the immune system to react to. Okay, that's why you know um, O negative is very popular to try to keep in emergency rooms or uh, EMS is on hand, and because it's incredibly rare, that's also why um, if you do not want to donate blood, do not tell the Red Cross uh, because they will harangue you until you need to cha until you change your phone number multiple times over. Um, no, I'm not saying don't donate blood. It's a noble thing to do, but if you don't have any ambitions to do so, if you're O negative, don't say anything. Um, so I can receive four possible blood types: A positive, my own; A negative. O positive, O negative. Now let's flip the script. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, I was A negative. Let's say I was A negative. Now how many blood types could I receive? The answer would be two. I can only receive A negative and O negative because since my immune system has never seen the RH factor before, if, I, if my blood type were negative, if I receive a positive blood type, there's the potential to react to it. Okay, so do you see how that lowers the possibilities of what you can receive right there? Now, when someone, now, okay, so look at this agglutinated or clumping blood in, in, in these little trays right here. Imagine that happening within a person's circulatory system, and now those agglutinated red blood cells uh, are now circulating throughout the body, and then they get stuck in the microcirculation in, uh, in areas like your kidneys where they could cause some damage. That's why it's imperative that we um, make sure that people get the correct blood type. Um, you know, and again, people that are O negative are considered universal donors and can only receive O negative. And people that are AB positive, their their body has seen all three of these antigens, so they they're called the universal recipient because they're going to have no chance to react to any of these. Okay. So that's my quick little demonstration on blood typing. I hope you folks found it useful. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so again, um, I am A positive, agglutination in A. No agglutination in B, agglutination in the RH factor. So that is A positive blood type. All right. If you folks, any of my students that are watching this, if you have any questions, let me know. Anyone else? I mean, if you have any questions, try to contact me. I'll do what I can to help you. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful and helpful, and um, this will help you understand blood typing a little more. Thanks, folks.